I would like to introduce Kate Puzleshny. Um, Kate is currently a second year doctoral student in kinesiology at the University of Waterloo. Um, the pre presented work is from her master's in kinesiology that she obtained at Lakehead University in 2022. Her current research examines the use of wearable technology to monitor and assess the risk of work-related musculoskeletal injuries in various occupations. And um, I'll let you introduce your topic. Perfect. Thank you, Sandra. And thank you, Croft, for having me today. So as Sandra had mentioned, this project is from my master's work when I was at Lakehead. Um, so all the data collected was done in April of 2022. Um, but to kind of just provide some insight, the project's entitled Change in Northwestern Ontario Professional Fire Service, Critical Incident Negotiator and Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder Risk During the COVID-19 Pandemic. Um, so before I get really started, I want to provide a couple of acknowledgements um, that are really important, um, including obviously the CROSH team for having me, um, as well congratulations to all the presenters today. They were all wonderful presentations. But most importantly, in terms of this project, I want to thank the Thunder Bay Fire Rescue Firefighters who have been continuously and graciously volunteering to participate in the research that we've been doing. I'd also like to thank Chief Hankio, Dr. Dennis Breskison, Dr. Regan Bolduck, or Mr. Regan Bolduck, sorry, Sarah Syed, my supervisor, Dr. Catherine Sinden, um, and my committee members, Paul Sanzo, uh, Dr. Nicholas Ravinelli, and Dr. Ash Muswash. And I'd like to thank CIHR for funding this work. So to, apologies, my computer is not liking Sorry, I'm going to try one more time. No worries. Sometimes um, you just have to hit the little arrow on the screen to get it, it back into My computer into completely mode. had like frozen. Oh, okay. All right, I'll stop trying to help you then. <laughs> no, that's okay. I, I've never seen what it's doing before and I've used Zoom a couple of times. Um. I will try one more time. It's a, it's a it's an issue with the PowerPoint. That's what the issue is. Okay. Well, I, if Toby has your presentation, we could also load it up from our end. I'm going to try reopen it quickly and see if that's the issue. Apologies for wasting some time. It's okay. You guys can still see. Yep. Looks good from my end. Perfect. So go. we'll just kind of jump in from right. here. <laughs> I'll stop talking. Go get them. <laughs> so I'll to kind of just set the stage a bit in terms of where my fit work fits into the larger program of research in occupational health and safety. Um, the purpose of applied ergonomics and occupational health and safety is to develop evidence-informed policies and procedures to support worker health and well-being. So that's in integrating approaches that address workers' physical and mental health. Um, the goal of this research was to provide values that facilitate workers' access to evidence-informed treatment and care. So, Thunder Bay Fire Rescue, which is the fire service that this research was conducted on, is a medium-sized professional fire service located, uh, as per the name, in Thunder Bay, and is populated with approximately 10,000 people. Um, over the city range, there's about eight fire stations that employs approximately 190 professional firefighters, and due to the location of the city, they respond to both urban and rural emergencies. So Dr. Sinden has an established research program with TBFR and has completed several projects for approximately five years with TBFR. 
And so my research is just a component of the funded project and it's been implemented over the last few years. So what do we know already? So phase one was collected before I came to Lakehead University in 2020. Um, so my work has been during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and during this phase, they assessed critical incident exposure and how exposure manifests in adverse mental health. So to do this, Dr. Sin and her team collected several outcome measures related to these constructs, including critical incident exposure and the risk of post-traumatic stress disorder. So here I'm going to just have my poll come up. So my question to you guys is what percentage of TBFR firefighters were exposed to a critical incident within two months? And how many experienced symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder within a month um, during this time frame? So this is pre-COVID-19. And so the options that are on the screen are 85% um, experienced uh, critical uh, experience of critical incident exposure versus 66% experienced symptoms of PTSD. And that's how the numbers kind of rank down the questions. So very surprisingly, actually, that the findings are the least answered question. So in December 2019 and January 2020, just prior to the pandemic, there was actually 91 TBFR fighter fighters or 91% of the TBFR firefighters that experienced a critical incident exposure and 85 had experienced symptoms of PTSD. So thank you for everyone for responding, but it actually seems to be a lot bigger of an exposure in Thunder Bay than we maybe have anticipated as per this poll. So to provide some context now behind what critical incidents actually are, so they're work-related trauma exposures. Um, so anything that is trauma-inducing, which can include calls with excessive media attention, injury, death of children, um, can include personal loss, injury, can be emission failure, human error, natural disasters, and pandemics such as the 2003 severe acute respiratory syndrome, also known as SARS, and the 2012 Middle East respiratory syndrome related coronavirus, which was considered MERS. And overall, these exposures cause emotional, psychological, and or physical distress and impacts. They can also cause the inability to properly cope with the exposure or generally, and the inability to properly perform their job tasks. So previous research had identified that 85 to 91 percent of firefighters have experienced a critical incident within the last two months, where critical incidents are highly prevalent among all emergency response personnel, including firefighters, and that 92 percent of firefighters will experience a critical incident within their career. These types of exposures increase the firefighters' risk for developing mental health disorders, such as post-traumatic stress disorder. So post-traumatic stress disorder is a mental health disorder that causes, um, that is caused by traumatic experience, such as critical incidents, as previously mentioned. Um, and symptoms can be triggered by either a single or repeated exposure to a critical incident and is highly individualized. Among emergency response personnel, previous research has shown that following a critical incident, 44.5 um, had tested positive for a mental health disorder, and specifically 23.2% were diagnosed and tested positive for PTSD, um, which is the most common mental health disorder among firefighters. And additionally, 35% would develop uh, symptoms that would be diagnosable for PTSD within two years of active service. So mental health disorders are within the top five leading causes of lost time and workplace disability claims among Canadian firefighters um, and have increased the risk and severity of PTSD, uh, more significant concerns pertaining to stigma, stigma and therefore it's hypothesized that these values may be higher due to underreporting. So in terms of COVID-19 and firefighting, pandemics 
apologies. Nothing's working on my end today. So hopefully I can keep this kind of up and running. But as previously mentioned, COVID-19 among other pandemics have been seen as traumatic events, such as types of critical incident exposures, which influence the risk of developing PTSD. Um, so again, pandemics more recently identified as a traumatic experience. And during emergency responses, firefighters are often exposed to COVID-19 either directly from interacting with individuals when they respond um, to individuals uh, living quarters. So if somebody was quarantining and now um, are responding to a call in that space, but they can also be exposed to COVID-19 when they come into close proximity to one another. Um, for example, let's say a couple individuals respond to a call who, where somebody was exposed. They now come into the space uh, and potentially affecting their team weights um, in terms of shift work. So due to the increased prevalence and risk of infection, there are further negative impacts where about it's identified in previous literature that firefighters are 15 times more likely to be infected than individuals in the general public, such as potentially you or I. Um, and further negative impacts can include increases in firefighter workload due to a reduction in available staff because people fall ill to the, uh, uh, the virus. Uh, as well as they can increase hours and work shifts to um, adapt to individuals not being there, um, which generally just affects their shift work and their teams. And those that are exposed could be potentially uh, infecting other individuals on their shift. So due to the physical and mental health impacts placed on firefighters, there's an overall increased risk for fear in con contracting the virus. So the overall purpose of this study was to determine the mental health burden among the TBFR firefighters in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. So objectives for this study included to identify the TBFR firefighters critical incident exposure over time, to identify the TBFR firefighters PTSD risk over time, and to identify which factors predict PTSD risk over time. And to do this, we collected a longitudinal study as I alluded to, phase one, or what we've considered also baseline, was collected just prior to the pandemic, um, which happens to be very lucky. So this was the data collection time frame between December 2019 and January 2020. Phase two was collected during the, uh, apologies, during the COVID-19 pandemic, which was in April of 2022. Exclusion criteria included inactive firefighters. Um, so these were firefighters that were uh, on leave amid return to work. And due to that longitudinal um, study, we were really looking for individuals with repeated participation. So anybody who had been terminated or retired in that time could not be um, included. So over this time with repeated measures, we had 78 participants and all this data collection was organized with TBFR's management union and primary knowledge user. And participation was encouraged both on and off duty to try to get as many individuals to come in. In terms of the instrumentation, we provided a demographic questionnaire that was previously created and administered with the TBFR firefighters. Specifically, it was the exact same with slight variations from that administered at baseline. We also administered the critical incident inventory for critical incident exposure and the PTSD checklist for the DSM-5, also known as the PCL-5, to identify PTSD symptom experiences within the TBFR firefighters. So the demographic questionnaire included questions such as age, years of service, previous participation, because we were trying to identify that repeated, um, repeated participation. We also just want to examine their eligibility criteria, their job rank title, and their primary station for some information. We then administered the CII 24 and CII 25. The reason I brought, highlight both is because these two were administered at two different times. So to begin with, the CII is a self-report questionnaire that examines critical incident exposure frequency and type. It was developed by Monier and colleagues for um, that identification, and it looks at the frequency and types of exposures experienced within the last two months. So this original questionnaire was 24 items, um, which was previously administered at baseline. And 
has also been broken down into six subscales, including trauma to self, victims known to fire emergency workers, um, also multiple casualties, incidents involving children, unusual problematic tactical operations, and exposures to severe medical traumas. Um, so while these were very important to identify in terms of repeated exposures, we also want to identify COVID-19 exposure. So we developed the CII 25, which is adding this a 25th item that was developed by our research team, which was directly asking whether they had been exposed to COVID-19 within the last two months. And as per like the questionnaire, you can see on the side, the participants had the opportunity to answer whether they've experienced this exposure one time, two times, three or more times or not at all. Um, and because this was a question that we had generated, it fell under the sixth subscale, which was identified to be the exposure to severe medical trauma. Lastly, the PCL5 is 20 item self report uh, questionnaire on the symptoms experienced based on the DSM-5. And the one thing I want to highlight is these are symptoms experienced within the last month, not the last two months, like the critical incident exposure inventory. Uh, this questionnaire was scored as per Weathers A all, which is a summation of the scores, which can range from zero to 80. These scores were then classified into a no risk being no um, symptom experience of zero, low risk was a score of one to 19, moderate risk was 20 to 39, and high risk was 40 to 80. In terms of statistical analyses that were conducted, to identify change in critical incident exposure over time, a Wilcox and Sign ring test was conducted. To identify the change in PTSD risk over time, a Wilcox and Sign ring test was also performed. But within the subjective itself, we also conducted a Spearman correlation to identify the strength of COVID-19 exposure on critical incident exposure um, as a critical incident exposure on PTSD risk. And then we also conducted a man went new test to compare low versus high COVID-19 exposure on PTSD risk. And then for the last objective to identify the best predictor of PTSD over time, we conducted a linear stepwise regression model. And all statistical analysis was conducted in IBM's SPS Statistics 28 for Mac OS. So to provide some information on the participants, so again, we collected a total of 78 male professional firefighters. Um, these are individuals with repeated participation between both baseline and during COVID-19. So these demographics just show that change in the same individuals over time. So age being 38.21 um, years at baseline being about 40.31 uh, at during COVID-19 and years of service increasing about three years over that period of time following the period of time that we collected this data. So with respect to objective one and the change in critical, critical incident exposure over time, we saw 1% increase in overall exposure over time. So this was an increase from 91% of exposure in the last two months to 92% which was not identified to be very, was not statistically significant. Um, but we further wanted to analyze the change in the critical incident exposure subscales that I had alluded to. And the only uh, subscale that was identified to be significant was trauma to self. So this was an increase by 10%, as you can see in the figure. So there was an increase in these exposures, um, specifically, uh, from 68 to 78% um, versus without getting too much into the stats, we can see that victims known to firefighter, uh, multiple casualties, incidents involving children, all did change over time, but not as significant as trauma to self, which I'll discuss a little bit later and more. In terms of change in PTSD risk over time, we saw 7% increase in those experiencing PTSD symptoms within the last month. Um, and this was an increase from 85 to 92%, um, where there was a significant increase in over time. Um, there was a decrease in both no to low PTSD risk over time. So we saw a decrease in both by 7% and an increase in moderate to high PTSD risk by 11 and then 3% respectively. So 
that was an important find statistically. Jumping a little bit further into those additional analyses we conducted under objective two, um, the Spearman correlations identified a slightly stronger correlation with the questions from the CII 25, which was that inclusion of COVID-19 as a question, where the correlation was 0.30 using the 24 scale item scale versus 0.32 with the 25 item scale. And lastly, in terms of results, having break, broken down COVID-19 exposure from the 25 item questionnaire, we categorize low COVID-19 exposure as anyone who experienced uh, or was exposed with once or two times, apologies, zero or one time within the last two months versus high COVID-19 exposure was identified to be exposure two or three or more times which when we categorized it that way, it actually ended up being a very even split. Um, but statistical significance was identified that there was a big difference or statistical difference between the two groups. Lastly, in terms of the third objective where we looked at an aggression model, we did see a change in the two predictors that were identified within this model. So our two predictors were critical insight exposure and age. I'll kind of, I'll be back to this, but years of service was excluded from our model due to its relation with age. But essentially we did see a change where critical insect exposure was lesser of a relation with critical incident exposure and PTSD risk over time versus age increased over time in terms of relationship with PTSD risk. So just going a little bit into the stats without digging in too deep, what we identified is that these two predictors uh, accounted for a little bit less of the variance over time, but were still significant in terms of identifying the firefighters PTSD risk. So overall, to understand these findings, uh, I want to follow the discussion and examine the findings more closely. So previous literature had identified that 85 to 91 percent of the firefighters experienced a critical incident within two months, and that 92 percent of firefighters will experience a critical incident within their career. However, within the study, we did find that 92 percent of the TBR firefighters experienced a critical incident within two months. So consequently, the TBR firefighters comparatively experienced an increased risk of critical incident exposure than other firefighting services. And as a result, uh, firefighters experienced an increase in their overall, but they also identified changes within their subscales. So specifically, if we kept breaking down that image I showed previously, there was an increase in exposure um, to trauma to self being 10%. And because of such a big jump, I want to just provide some detail of where that 10% comes from. So there was a 2% increase in exposures to a serious line of duty injury to self there's a six percent increase in a threat to serious line of duty injury or a threat or death to self so there is the threats surrounding that there's an eight percent increase in firefighters experienced an incident which necessitated search or rescue there's a one percent direct exposure to extreme hazardous material and then 12 percent experienced an increase exposure to direct to blood and bodily fluids. Um, so all of these were substantial changes during the COVID-19 pandemic. We also saw an increase in multiple casualties um, being they more than one incident um, with more than one injury. We did see decreases in exposures to victims known to firefighter by 9%, incidents involving children by 2%, unusual problematic tactical operations and then severe medical trauma. And because of these findings, these specific findings, we should consider the developments of resiliency programs to these changes over time uh, to help mitigate and or prevent these types of exposures from occurring to overall reduce the risk of mental health disorders. So if there's any way that we can directly uh, address these changes. In terms of change in PTSD risk over time, there was a statistical significant change as alluded to, 
um, where we saw decrease in those experiencing no to low um, PTSD risk, but we did see an increase in those experiencing a moderate to high risk where the, the total change over time saw a 59% uh, worsened uh, PTSD risk between the TBFR firefighters. Um, of those who were previously identified to be experiencing a moderate to high PTSD risk at baseline, we identified that 36% had worsened, while those experiencing a moderate to high risk during the COVID-19 pandemic, we had seen worsened risk by 90% since baseline. So generally trends lean towards an overall worsened PTSD risk um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, where these findings suggest and support the need for change in firefighters intervention programs. Um, and these findings have provided awareness to key stakeholders, including the city, and have sparked discussion around the needed change concerning their PTSD risk. Specifically with relation to COVID-19 exposure, while other firefighting samples uh, experience 64% of firefighters experienced COVID-19 exposure, the TBFR firefighters experienced, or 74% were exposed to COVID-19. This is a 10% increase from other uh, firefighting samples. And of the 74 who were exposed to COVID-19 within the last two months, 40% of those firefighters were exposed three or more times. What more specifically, I had kind of previously alluded to an increase by 3% in PTSD risk over time for those experiencing high PTSD risk. So that being during COVID-19, 4% had experienced high PTSD risk. And these were among the 40% who were exposed to COVID-19 three or more times within the last two months. Where overall the TBR for fighter fighters exposure to COVID-19 increased the risk of PTSD. However, their experience lowered their PTSD was lower than other P or apologies for my stumbling. They experienced lower PTSD risk than other firefighting samples. Um, but these study findings do suggest that COVID-19 did influence the firefighters' PTSD risks, and pandemics should be more closely examined and considered. Um, when examining first responders' mental health and just examining it more closely as a critical incident trauma experience. Lastly, with respect to our third objective, um, we did see that 20% of the variants in both baseline and during COVID-19 were accounted for uh, within the prediction. I apologize. 20% of the variance was accounted for with the predictors included at both baseline and during COVID-19. So predictors being age and critical incident exposure, other being years of service, which I had mentioned was excluded due to its relationship with age. Um, but the strength of the predictors did change over time where we saw that the strength of critical incident exposure decreased while age increased. Um, changes in predictors should be considered in the future, and so should other uh, predictors. So it's hypothesized that gender, stress, burnout, coping style, marital status, social support, and support availability, availability may be among additional factors that influence PTSD risk among the TBFR firefighters. So in terms of some study implications, overall procedures and policies should be developed which address the firefighters' risks and their exposures as seen in this project. As part of the Occupational Health and Safety Program and the research that we're conducting, we assess changes that occurred over time, which increased the awareness surrounding exposures that the TBFR firefighters were um, experiencing, which were utilized to help support the TBFR firefighters' needs. And we need to further conduct more research and provide needs to decrease mental health disability and improve prevention strategies among this firefighting context. As part of our program, we also included an all translation strategy, which is common in health research and in occupational health and safety. So our problem was to identify the most effective way to transfer findings into practice. So this infographic was developed using an integrative knowledge translation approach. 
which included active dissemination with key stakeholders, um, which helped facilitate uptake of the findings and implementa implementation of findings to the entire service. So we kind of grounded this work and the knowledge to action cycle uh, by Graham A. All, which was a fundamental framework to help develop the infographic to be shared with the service. And this was to ensure that the partners able to obtain quick uptake and implement the findings. This will consequently help support the firefighters needs to develop evidence and for program and policies to help medicate and prevent their overall risk of mental health disorders. All research comes with some limitations. So a couple that I just want to highlight were recruitment and sample size. Um, there are 190 professional firefighters, but we could only recruit 78 with repeated uh, participation of both timelines due to changes. Um, there are also seasonal and monthly demand changes. So um, collections that occurred between December and January would have potentially seen different critical incidents than in compared to April uh, in terms of a yearly time frame. Um, there was also extended data collection periods, differences in questionnaire time frame related recalling, so one month versus two months in terms of recalling, uh, our personal mental health assessment, um, PTSD symptom severity versus frequency, which was not collected um, as similarly as the critical incident exposure inventory was. And that this is gender is a gendered occupation uh, occupation, and there is still stigma that surrounds um, mental health among male firefighters. So to conclude and provide some key takeaways, the TBR for our firefighters continue to experience a mental health burden, uh, which was identified to be influenced by the COVID nineteen pandemic. Study findings will be used and are being used to inform and increase the awareness that the firefighters uh, need for resources to mitigate and prevent these exposures. There's a need to develop a psychologically healthy workplace, um, which is hopefully aimed to decrease mental health disability and increase prevention strategies, where overall the study findings are to help identify and support the TBR firefighters needs um, to help them in best ways that we can. So thank you to everyone for listening and bearing with me through this presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Great job. Um, sad, sad data, but important data. Uh, there's a couple yes. of questions here. Uh, the first one is from Judith Nelson. She's asking, are the Thunder Bay firefighters responding to medical emergencies or just fire calls? To see such an they increased are. risk of, yeah, they are, they are, yeah. Do you, I mean, do you want to describe uh, Thunder Bay firefighter roles? So, from my understanding of Thunder Bay firefighter roles, um, they are expected to. Well, first, I'd like to start that anecdotally, like none of this was like we don't have this necessary information specifically but anecdotally they are expected to respond to medical calls as well as they are one of the first to um come to site in such a rural region um in terms of responsibilities in thunder bay it's whoever is on site response first so both are called another big thing to mention in terms of the thunder bay is that every station gets the calls so it's not like it's allocated to one specific station. It is, but all the stations will hear it. Um, so there's still some things to be worked through in terms of their calls. Yeah, that's important context. Okay, the second question is, are you aware of any research looking at PTSD and the effects that geography, like rural versus urban, or status such as volunteer versus professional firefighters may have? Yes, so um, to be completely honest with you, I have, at the time that I was doing this research, so this is completed as part of my master's, which I only completed a year ago, but in the time that I was doing this research, I had not come across any that looked at specifically like the differences between rural and urban calls. Whether that's still mm -hmm. the case today, I'm not entirely sure. 
I'm not personally aware of it. I have looked every once in a while out of pure curiosity and have not seen anything, but to do a deep dive, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. I think actually Dr. Sinden's work is is really leading that area of uh, the the unique challenges of rural, right? It is. Uh, and so when I was doing it, yeah. it, that was the unique aspect of it. But because there was nothing to compare to, I, I didn't have anything to compare yeah. to myself. No, that's fair. I know we're out of time. I selfishly just want to ask one little question. Does... um like the increase in uh, trauma to self, it seems like that's also COVID related, right? Like, I mean, I don't know that you can say that definitively, but was that also the team's sense? It, anecdote, it made sense to us based on the incident, like the, how it was categorized. So all mm -hmm. those little individual things kind of do fall into things that did change over COVID-19. Um, so if I can kind of go back and go over them. I won't go in the slides, but I just have a couple notes here. So trauma to self was um, exposures to serious line of duty to self, um, threats, incidents necessitating research or, res or search or rescue, um, hazardous material and blood and bodily fluids. I think a lot of these are not necessarily because of COVID-19, but because of the changes that occurred due to COVID-19. Um, mm -hmm. so there was yeah. a lot of changes in, right? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, the increases to bodily fluid, I would assume people would be taking note if they thought that they had been, right, exposed to fluids that had COVID. So, well, the other thing anyways. is that we don't have necessarily research to back up is we do know that we've had a little bit of an increase in Thunder Bay in terms of substance use which also mm. is related to that blood and bodily fluids. So that was also a thing right. that we were predicting had an influence. Okay. All right, well, thank you for your time. I wish you had more time for questions. Great presentation, great job. Thank you for participating.